how are you? Um, I, uh, I want to, I want to talk to you about something. Um, I have this rash. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I am doing uh, a, like a, pro a project. Um, and the project is something that a lot of people are doing, um, which is great because it's a really big project. Um, I am helping to name all the colors on the internet. I know. So, okay. So I'm, so there is a very rudimentary, uh, explanation I'm going to give you about what this all means. Um, if I say something incorrect, I can't do this over again. I just can't because I'm a very busy person and I can't just like edit video all day. So I don't know any color experts. So I just have to tell you what I know about, about color, uh, on the page as compared to color, uh, on a screen. So colors on a page, like any printed color, um, is made up of a combination. Some of you will know this of CMYK. Okay. Cyan, magenta, yellow, and K, which is black for reasons that are not important to go into now. So any, you know, different combinations of those colors create different colors like Pantone, you know, has like all these different colors and those are printed colors or they're paint colors. And those, those colors have names and they have numbers with the Pantone system. And you know, that's, that's how you get color, uh, in like the real world IRL. Okay. But on a screen, you know, on the internet or any, any kind of digital, you know, production, you have colors obviously being used on the internet, but when you have a color on a screen, it doesn't behave the same way as color on the page. It uses a different system. There's no CMYK that, that is used in like digital color. It's RGB, which is red, green, blue. Okay. I don't know. So like color, I told you this was rudimentary and like color people out there are going to be like, all of you will be horrified by this, but um, like light, like color absorbs light, I'm pretty sure, on paper IRL, like it's different absorptions of light, like give you, give the eye different colors and things. Let's use the Pantone system as an example. I'm sure there's other sam examples of like companies or organizations or systems for naming colors, but the colors like IRL have, have names, millennial pink, for example, they have names, but on a screen light is like refracted. And so the color systems, they don't, they don't behave the same way. And so you can't have like Pantone pink or whatever on the internet. So there's like 16 million different colors that you can have on a screen with this, you know, RGB spectrum or whatever, but the colors on the internet or on, you know, in digital, in the digital world, uh, so far they don't, they have, if you've ever done any graphic design or you've ever like worked on a website or something like that, you know, that the different colors you can use from that color wheel, they have like a hashtag and a combination of letters and numbers. You know, like, like you could find a red or something. I'm making this up. Remember, I don't know what I'm talking about. Like FF9D6 or something like that. I think it's six or seven or eight letters and numbers that like they're, that they're, they're assigned to these millions of colors, 16 something, 16.7 million colors, uh, something like that. <laughs> And, and they don't, they don't have names. They're given like, um, a place on that color wheel and assigned like how much R and G and B have combined to make that color. So there are several different, uh, companies or organizations who have launched a project to name all the colors on the internet, all the colors in the digital RGB spectrum. Yeah. 16, almost 17 million colors should have names. And why should they have names? Well, because things are named. That's like how we make sense of, you know, what we're seeing, like colors have names, sage, banana, you know, millennial pink. 
And it's much more fun if you have a name for a color instead of saying like, oh, you know, this, uh, I'd really like a uh, EF, you know, 469G for this particular, you know, digital product or website, whatever. I mean, that's no fun, you know, so these colors ought to be named. Well, I really like that. <laughs> I really think that's a great idea. And it sounds like a lot of fun. So when I heard about this, I was like, I want to name colors. I went onto a website called colornames.org, colornames.org. And I was like, I was a kid in a candy store. Candy store, that's a good name for a color. So this project is being done by Creative Commons, okay? And that's why I have my laptop. Well, one of the reasons I have my laptop. Um, creativecommons.org um, is a nonprofit organization that helps overcome legal obstacles to the sharing of knowledge and creativity to address the world's pressing challenges. My hair is not one of them, but sometimes it feels that way. So that's groovy. Um, it sounds like a something I can get behind, you know. I don't know much about them, I'm not associated with them, except, <laughs> except, over the past year, and now we're in a new year, so I'm starting a new year of naming colors. Over the year of 2019 to 2020, I named colors. I named a lot of them. How many do you think that I named? Do you think that I named 300? That would be a lot. Do you think that I named a thousand? It's ridiculous. Oh no. To date, I have named 4,115 colors. Yeah. Uh, I'll show you a few of them. I'll pop a few up on the screen. I'll read a bunch of them and you can go see what colors that, you know, have been named. 4,115 of these things. Painted Posy. Uh, Mandolina. Pundit. Pundit. Uh, Mountain Time. Southern Gentleman, Billy's Holiday, <laughs> um, Parquet, Backup Dancer. I mean, you know, there's just Pinetti, Del Cabo, uh, Paramama, Chew Toy, Presumptuous, HVAC. I mean, it just, it just makes me really happy to name these colors. And first of all, I have tried, you know, to not just have English words. So I'll like look up like Swahili, like a Swahili word for, you know, luck or, um, some, you know, a Chinese word for, you know, sky or something like that. Like I try to be like global about it because, you know, if you, if all the colors are named in English, like that's kind of lame. Colors will be used everywhere. And, um, yeah, so far. So, so I, I try to do that. And also like the way that it works and you'll see it if you go, if you go online and, and try this, which you totally should. It's so much fun. I mean, some people would be like, this is not fun. I don't like this at all, but I don't understand you. <laughs> um, go name something else. <laughs> go name fish. Um, a lot of them have names already, but some of them don't. Um, you go on line and then you, you, you buy, you get a color and you can just like get lucky. So they just give you a random color or you can search on that color wheel for a color that you really want to name, like a pink that you love or something. But a lot of times because what do they say? How many colors have been named so far? A lot? Sorry, sorry. Okay. So colornames.org, 2,160,512 Name, uh, colors have been named so far on January 6th at 7.41 a.m. This is what the website looks like. Okay, cool. Um, it talks about why they're doing this. It talks about how you can help. And um, some of the latest names that have been posted. Alien Altoids. Love it. Um, Sulfur Sky. That's great. So you can kind of see like what people have done lately. And you can also moderate. Okay, because sometimes with these with these you know names like you obviously have like people who have stumbled upon this site and they're like I mean they're like high school kids or something and you can tell because it's like like a, a you know a color will be named like math sucks or like you know she's mean or something like that and actually those are pretty good colors uh, color names but um, there's a ton of duplicates like banana yellow you know or 
puke green. That's another one you see a lot of. So, um, so moderators can put thumbs down on some of those words, but it'll also flag the duplicates. So if you find a yellow and you, you submit banana yellow and click submit, uh, it'll tell you that it's a dupe, it's a duplicate. And so you should probably try to name it something else or just move on to a different, a different color and try a different name, such as, I'm just gonna scroll. It's so fun, it's so, so fun. Bill Murray, Bill Murray, um, To the Bridge, Chamber Choir, uh, So Stella, Convocation, It's Curtains for Me, I wonder what that color was, um, Fix It, Pudgy, Bon Courage, Shisaki. I mean, there's 50 pages of these. I mean, I do Folk Life, Bully Pulpit, Garbo, mm, good one, Scepter, Transduce, Wakey Wakey, Magnifique, I mean, okay, so just one more brief thing about this. Um, you should do it, you should do it, um, because it's, it's really fun, and I think I've made that abundantly clear, but I want to get definitely to 10,000. Is that weird? I mean, yeah, depending on how many colors I actually name, and by the way, if they're voted down a bunch, you know, maybe they won't make it through. Um, that's okay. I see color names that I don't love and I'm like, eh, I'm going to give that a thumbs down, but rarely, you know, rarely. There's 16 million, let's see for sure, 16 million, there's a lot. I can't find it right away on the site, but, uh, but maybe, uh, yeah. Yeah, 16,000, sorry, 16 million, 777,216. So like, it's all good. Like name your colors, I'm sure they're gonna get through because that's a lot of colors. So um, I think part of the reason that I am able to do this, part of the reason that I think it's so fun is that I'm a writer. I'm a writer first. Before anything else, I've always been a writer. I love to put words to things because it's the only way I can make sense of life at all. I have to write it down. Like what just happened? How do I feel about it? You know? And so I have, you know, writing for a long time, you would hope that you have like a decent vocabulary, right? And that you're creative. And so I am not a lot of things, but I have a decent vocabulary and I'm very creative. And have I mentioned, I like naming colors. So, so that's true about why, you know, I've, I've been doing this and love to do it. But also I was a performer for many years working with a, an ensemble called the Neo Futurists here in Chicago. Uh, some of the best years of my life was making work with that performance art company. And we did this thing before each show as the people would file into the show. It was very weird, but great. We would, two of us would wear sunglasses and put on headphones. We couldn't hear anything except the music we were listening to. And we would stand at the doors. There were two doors into the show and we would write name tags for everyone. Everyone who came to the show got a name tag with not their name on it. We would just randomly name them, like whatever came to mind. It was true free association. And we'd be like, what's your name? And they'd be like, Tracy. And we'd be like, here you go, frog legs. You know, it wasn't mean, but it was just like whatever came to mind, that's what we would do. That's what we would name them. So I had years really of doing this kind of thing where it was just like, boom, you know, um, it was like, boom, I'm gonna name you, you know, Into the Groove, Gym Locker, Confidence Man, Pushy, Uptown, Kroger, Twice Shy, I mean, Boba's Daughter, I don't know, like Boba Fett, I, I don't know where that came from, um, Do Gooder, Cusp, Rondine, like I'll go to operas or I'll go to music terms, you know, I'm on the internet already, so I like jump around to different sites. So that's the scoop. I, I'd i like to name so many. 10,000 is a goal. I mean, what if I could name 100,000 colors? I mean, that's insane. There's only so many words, which is why going to other languages is good and, you know, but I'll watch TV. If you wanna do this, try this method. I just, I just don't know how this will be received. It, anyway, if you want to do this, here's a way to do it. I mean, I'll like be watching TV with Eric. Like he'll be watching, you know, The Expanse. Like we're watching The Expanse right now. It's very good. So this is like a sci-fi futuristic 
show. So like I'll be just doing, you know, naming colors and things and like words will come, come over the transom and you know, it'll expanse. Like that might be a color. It's pretty low hanging fruit on that. But if they're talking about, you know, I don't know, flux capacitor or something like that, then that can become a color. And I always hit the get lucky button. So it just pops up a random color and, and I'll name it. So sometimes the colors sort of respond, uh, correspond to the name, wet, hot pants, probably pink, but, um, but a lot of time it's just, it's just a cool word or a set of words. You don't assign your name to it. You don't, uh, you don't get credit for it. I mean, it's not like Mary Fonz named all these colors. Thanks, Mary. Um, it's totally anonymous. Um, but of course I'm keeping a record because I love it and I want to see if I can get to 10,000. So I've got 4,115 colors named. If I keep up that pace by this time next year, at least, I'll be, you know, closing in on 10,000. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> that is, wow, that is a lot. But uh, colornames.org, Creative Commons takes donations. You give them a donation. Perhaps I will get credit for some of these names. Uh, but that's what I have for you. And yeah, I'll, you know, I'll just be naming colors over here.